You are welcome to the 8th lecture on stylistics. This lecture is being delivered specially for the students studying for the speciality Foreign Language to Foreign Languages, starting at the Department of English and German Languages. The theme of this lecture is Phonetic Expressive Means and Stylistic Devices. Within this lecture, we will consider the following issues. First of all, we'll talk about different levels of language units and then pass to the precise stylistic devices on the level of phonetics, such as onomatopoeia, alliteration, rhyme, and rhythm. We have already mentioned that stylistics is regarded as a branch of linguistics. Hence, stylistics is not equal to linguistic science. Linguistic disciplines such as phonetics, lexicology, morphology, syntax. Because they are level disciplines, as they treat only one linguistic level, and stylistics investigates the questions on all the levels and different aspects of the texts in general. The smallest or shortest unit of language is the phoneme. The sequence of phonemes making units of higher ranks represents the phonemic level. As a general direction of the studies connected with stylistic devices shows, the most powerful expressive means of any language are phonetic. Pitch, melody, stress, pausation, drawing out certain syllables, whispering, a sing-song manner of speech, and other ways of using the voice are more effective than any other means in intensifying the utterance emotionally or logically. To start us off, here is a list of the major levels of language and their related technical terms in language study, along with a brief description of what each level covers. If the level studies the sound of spoken language, the way words are pronounced, then we speak about such branch of language study as phonology and phonetics. If the level of language describes the way words are constructed, describes words and their constituent structures, then it is morphology. On the level of the lexical analysis and lexicology, we study the words we use, the vocabulary of the language and semantics as a branch of language study investigates the meaning of words and sentences. If the level of language is interested in the way words combine with other words to form phrases and sentences, then this is the branch of language study as syntax and grammar. And if we speak about the textual level of language, then we should, then it is represented by the branch of language study as text linguistics. What is absolutely central to our understanding of language and style is that these levels are interconnected. They interpenetrate and depend upon one another, and they represent multiple and simultaneous linguistic operations in the planning and production of an utterance. Well, in our further lectures, we will discuss different stylistic devices and expressive means uh, depending on the level of language. And of course, the first and the most, one of the most important levels is phonetics. 
And that's why this lecture is devoted to the phonetic stylistic devices and expressive means. Among the phonetic stylistic devices, we will cover onomatopoeia, alliteration, rhyme, and rhythm. Onomatopoeia is a combination of speech sounds which aims at imitating sounds produced in nature, for example, by wind, by the sea, by the thunder, by things, machines or tools, by people, through the actions of singing, laughter, etc., and animals. There are two varieties of onomatopoeia, direct and indirect. Direct onomatopoeia is contained in words that imitate natural sounds, as ding dong, burr, bang, cuckoo. These words have different degrees of imitative quality. Some of them immediately bring to mind whatever it is that produces the sound. Others require the exercise of a certain amount of imagination to decipher it. Onomatopoeic words can be used in a transferred meaning, as for instance, ding dong, which represents the sounds of bell rung continuously, may mean noisy or strenuously contested. Indirect onomatopoeia demands some mention of what makes the sound, as for example, rustling of curtains in the following line, and the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain. This is a line from Edgar Poe's work. Indirect onomatopoeia is a combination of sounds, the aim of which is to make the sound of the utterance an echo of its sense. It is sometimes called echo writing. In the example, the repetition of the sound s actually produces the sound of the rustling of the curtain. Alliteration is a phonetic stylistic device which aims at imparting a melodic effect to the utterance. The essence of this device lies in the repetition of similar sounds, in particular consonant sounds, in close succession, particularly at the beginning of successive words. Through fluorescence and feud, frosts and fires, it follows the laws of progression. By Goldsworthy. Alliteration, like most phonetic expressive means, does not bear any lexical or other meaning. It is generally regarded as a musical accompaniment of the author's idea, supporting it with some emotional atmosphere which each reader interprets for himself. Doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. Thus, the repetition of the sound d in the lines quoted from Poe's poem The Raven prompts the feeling of anxiety, fear, horror, anguish, and all these feelings simultaneously. Alliteration in the English language is deeply rooted in the traditions of English folklore. The laws of phonetic arrangement in Anglo-Saxon poetry differed greatly from those of present-day English poetry. In Old English poetry, alliteration was one of the basic principles of verse and considered, along with rhythm, to be its main characteristic. It is frequently used as a well-tested means not only in verse, but in emotive prose, in newspaper headlines, in the titles of books, in proverbs and sayings, as for example in the following, blind as a bat, to rob Peter to pay Paul, etc. Rhyme is the repetition of identical or similar terminal sound combination of words. Rhyming words are generally placed at a regular distance from each other. In verse, they are usually placed at the end of the corresponding lines. 
For example, sight and flight, pain and gain, madness and sadness. They are called perfect rhymes. Punning rhymes such as bear and bear are also identical rhymes. The rhyme may, of course, extend even further to the left than the last stressed vowel. If it extends all the way to the beginning of the line, so that we have two lines that sound identical, then it is called hollow rhyme. For example, for ice cream, for ice cream. Rhymes in the general sense are classified according to the degree and manner of the phonetic similarity. And linguists point out the following types of rhyme. Syllabic, a rhyme in which the last syllable of each word sounds the same but does not necessarily contain vowels. Cleaver, silver, or Peter, patter. Imperfect rhyme, it's a rhyme between a stressed and an unstressed syllable. For instance, wing, carrying. Semi-rhyme. It's a rhyme with an extra syllable on one word, bent and ending. Oblique or slant is a rhyme with an imperfect match in sound. Green, fiend. One, thumb. Assonance rhyme. These are matching vowels. For example, shake, hate. Assonance is sometimes used to refer to slant rhymes. Consonants, matching consonants, rabbies, robbers. Half rhyme or sprung rhyme, matching final consonants, bent, and. And alliteration or head rhyme, matching initial consonants, short, ship. And one more phonetic stylistic device is rhythm. The most general definition of rhythm may be expressed as follows. Rhythm is a flow, movement, procedure, etc. characterized by basically regular recurrence of elements or features as beat or accent in alternation with opposite or different elements of features. It is a mighty weapon in stirring up emotions, whatever its nature or origin, whether it is musical, mechanical, or symmetrical, as in architecture. Rhythm is a periodicity, which requires specification as to the type of periodicity. Rhythm intensifies the emotions. It contributes to the general sense. The parameters of the rhythm in verse and in prose are entirely different. In verse, rhythm is regular succession of weak and strong stress. Rhythm in language necessarily demands oppositions that alternate. Long, short, stressed, unstressed, high, low, and other contrasting segments of speech. Rhythm is not a mere addition to verse or emotive prose, which also has its rhythm. Rhythm in verse, as a stylistic device, is defined as a combination of the ideal metrical scheme and the variations of it, variations which are governed by the standard. Much has been said and written about rhythm in prose. Some investigators, in attempting to find rhythmical patterns of prose, superimpose metrical measures on prose. The unit of measure in prose, however, is not the syllable, but a structure, a word combination, a sequence of words, that is, phrases, clauses, sentences, even supraphrasal units. The structural pattern, which in the particular case is a rhythmical unit, will be repeated within the given span of prose. The rhythm 
will be based not on regular alternation of opposing units, it is a regular beat, but on the repetition of similar structural units following one another or repeated after short intervals. The most observable rhythmical patterns in prose are based on the use of certain stylistic devices, namely enumeration, repetition, parallelism, and chiasmus. In the following example, from the work by John Galsworthy, it is not very easy to observe the rhythm, uh, but if the ear is a little bit used to it, then we can do it. The high sloping group of a fine sooty pink was almost Danish, and two ducky little windows looked out of it, giving an impression that very tall servants lived up there. Prose rhythm, unlike verse rhythm, lacks consistency as it follows various principles. But nevertheless, a trained ear will always detect a kind of alternation of syntactical units. The task is then to find these units and to ascertain the manner of alternation. This is not an easy task because, as has been already pointed out, Rhythm is not an essential property of prose, whereas it is essential in verse. Prose is the op opposite of verse, and this opposition is primarily structural. In this case, rhythmical structure versus a rhythmical structure. This is short information on the topic concerning phonetic stylistic devices and expressive means. As usual, you are suggested to answer these comprehension questions to check your understanding. And this is the list of sources for your further reading. Thank you for your attention.